The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. William Farrow was born on September 24, 1918, in Darlington, South Carolina. He was a leader in church youth activities, an Eagle Scout at 16 years old, and graduated as an excellent student in 1935 from St. John's High School. He, he was surrounded by a very loving family. A lot of his family lived there. Um, his, uh, his mother, of course, um, and particularly an aunt, Margaret. Uh, he was very close to her. And in fact, she wrote a book about him uh, called uh, Tall and Free as Meant by God by Margaret Meadow Stem. His, he was from a broken family. His father deserted them, and uh, so his mother had a tough time of it, and he really never had any money as a child, but that didn't hinder him, so to speak, because uh, he came from a good family. He was a good student, uh, reportedly of 140 IQ, uh, so he's very smart, um, and he wanted to go to college, and he went to the University of South Carolina. In the fall of 1939, Farrow was one of three USC students selected to begin pilot training at the Hawthorne Aviation School in Orangeburg. By 1941, he had received his commission and silver wings of an Army aviator and began training on the new B-25 Mitchell bomber with the 17th Bomb Group in Pendleton, Oregon. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, plunging the United States into World War II. December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. It was a shock to the American people, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt wanted a bold, dangerous mission to bomb the Japanese home islands as soon as possible to boost the country's morale. The man who planned and led this ambitious raid was Lieutenant Colonel James Jimmy Doolittle. William Farrow was one of 80 airmen to volunteer to fly 16 B-25 Mitchell bombers, taking off from the flight deck of the USS Hornet aircraft carrier, bombing Japan, and then landing in China. Well, this Doolittle raid was really extraordinary. Uh, extraordinary in its um, uh, target and extraordinary in its execution. Uh, taking a, a B-25 bomber and trying to uh, put it on an aircraft carrier and then taking that to a striking distance of Japan was just uh, not just high risk, it was extraordinarily bold. And everyone who was involved in that raid knew what the risks were. And they understood that they very likely would not come back. On the morning of April 18, 1942, the task force was sighted by a Japanese fishing boat, forcing the B-25 bombers to launch 10 hours earlier and further away from Japan than they had planned. All 16 planes took off safely from the USS Hornet's flight deck. Lieutenant Billy Farrow was the pilot of the 16th plane, named the Bat Out of Hell, originally to be held in reserve, but Doolittle decided to use all of the planes since the early launch was jeopardizing the mission. The Bat Out of Hell crew number 16 destroyed an oil storage tank and damaged the Mitsubishi aircraft factory near Nagoya, Japan. 16 hours after leaving the USS Hornet, Lieutenant Farrow's B-25 ran out of gas and the crew was forced to bail out over Japanese-held territory in China. They were captured, interrogated, and tortured by the Japanese. You know, uh, unfortunately, our crew was captured by the Japanese. So 
uh, I was a prisoner of war for 40 months. So I didn't know for 40 months how successful the raid might have been. Anyhow, we were prisoners of war and in solitary confinement by the Japanese. When Bob Height uh, told me a story um, that uh, he got mad at a Japanese, one of the Japanese guards that came in who was a particularly sadistic one. He took his sword out. Height grabbed at him or hit him. And uh, he swung at Height and hit him in the head and cut him badly. And he was just about to kill him when Bill jumped up, grabbed the guy by the arms, pinning his arms to him, took him to the cell door, threw him out and closed the door. And uh, Bob said he saved his life. On October 14, 1942, William Farrow and two other airmen were executed by the Japanese at dawn. Farrow's body was cremated and his ashes hidden in a Japanese mortuary until American investigators found them in 1945. The following year, his remains were buried with honor in Arlington National Cemetery. Bill's mother, Jessie, found um, something he had written for himself. Uh, it was called My Future, and just a, a list of things that he needed to improve and another list of things that he wanted to do uh, to make himself a better pilot, a better person. And uh, she gave, <coughs> gave that to a newspaper in Washington, D.C. She was working for the government at the time in Washington, D.C. And uh, it uh, ended up being um, published. They changed the name of it to um, An American's Creed for Victory. And it was in newspapers uh, nationwide. I'll read you a few. Things like stay in glowing health, uh, stay close to God, do His will, His commandments, don't waste energy or time. In order, there is achievement. Uh, fear nothing, look the world in the eye. Uh, and the final one, which is hard. Uh, fear not for the future. If I die tomorrow, I will have done today's work. That's just a few. Remarkable young man. Well, I think it's really easy to concentrate on the the uh, major figures that have contributed to the freedom that we enjoy. But you look at this, here's this young man who at the time of his death was 24 years old from a uh, small town, Darlington in South Carolina, and uh, who found himself on this extraordinary mission to attack Japan. Uh, the first strike against Japan after Pearl Harbor by American forces, um, that in itself is remarkable that you had a South Carolinian but the attitude that he brought into this, this attitude that it was his duty, and it was so typical of that generation, this sense of responsibility and duty and this willingness to go do the hard thing. It's, uh, you know, it was a, basically a suicide mission. You know, you know let's face it, they, they knew their chances weren't great of coming back. You know, it, it's quite a le legacy. Uh, um, What's well, amazing here, 70 years later, you know, playing tribute to South Carolina Hall of Fame. Uh, several years ago, we went to a ceremony at Myrtle Beach Air Force Base where they named the main road, Barrow Boulevard. It must have touched people's hearts. Because uh, here we are, you know, 70 years later, still talking about it. That mission, that war, that was a long way from Darlington, South Carolina a small town in the middle of the 20th century in the Palmetto State. Uh, and that prison in Shanghai and that execution site in that cemetery was a long way from South Carolina. And yet here's this young 24-year-old South Carolinian who was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice because he believed in what he was doing. He believed in that liberty. He believed in that nation back home. And um, that's the stuff of, of genuine heroism. Thank you.